All right, we are going to start on variation. So we are going to look at variation, okay? So variation. So first, let's get our definition and understanding of what's the meaning of variation. The first question you should ask is, what is variation? All right, so what is, so variation is definitely due to changes. It involves differences, but the point to note is what changes, what differences? So variation refers to differences in the phenotypic characteristics. So I've already explained to you what you mean by phenotypic. So it refers to differences in the phenotypic characteristics of an organism. So phenotypic characteristics of an organism. Does it involve the same organism? or does it involve different organisms? So, number two, point number two, it involves the same as well as different organisms. So it's a lump sum thing. That means differences between organisms of the same species, differences between organisms of different species. All right. So the first thing you've got to know of variation is differences in phenotropic characteristics. By the way, let's reflect back. What's the meaning of phenotypic characteristics? What's your understanding as phenotypic characteristics? Okay. Uh, what is the meaning of phenotypic characteristics? Huh? Um, so phenotypic characteristics means observable. Phenotypic characteristics are observable characteristics. Characteristics that can be seen, that we can see that are referred to as phenotypic characteristics, okay? So differences in observable characteristics gives you what you call variation. It involves all living organisms, whether it is of the same species or different species, all right? The next thing you've got to ask yourself is, why are there these differences? Okay, the main factor that causes the differences, main factor, that causes the differences, that causes the differences, okay? Uh, variation, huh? the main factor which we are going to explore is genetic. So it is the genetic factor, all right? And to a certain extent, okay? All right, secondary factor. The secondary factor that causes variation to a certain extent will be your environmental factor. So that means both the main here, genetic, genetically, okay, there must be the genetic content of an organism must be different. And that is why the organisms look different and are observed to be different. It's mainly due to the genetic content, it's due to the genotype of the organisms. But to a le lesser extent, where the organism is uh, living, the habitat of the organism. Like look at the polar bear and look at the grizzly bear. All right, look at the polar bear and look at the grizzly bear. The polar bear and the grizzly bear are different uh, due to their difference in the genetic content. Okay, but if you were to take the grizzly bear, where it is staying in this habitat and you take it to a, 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 a cool a temperate or you take it to the Arctic or Antarctic or you take it to a place where uh, it is cold, snowing all the time, like in the North America and all that, you will find that there will be a certain change in the observable characteristics of the grizzly bear. And uh, that change is due to the environmental change. So environmental does cause uh, variation. So it does contribute, but it remains as a secondary factor. All right, that's it. Okay. Now we go into how many types of variation do you have? All right, how many types of variation do you have? All right, let's continue. Okay, so, so this is what you mean by variation and variation is attributed to two, two causes, main factor and secondary factor. All right, now the next thing you gotta ask yourself is how many types of variation you have? Types of variation, all right? There are two types of variation. So variation, there are two types. One, what we call continuous variation, and the other one is what we call discontinuous variation. Sometimes it's also referred to as 
discrete continuation. So we have continuous variation. So I'm going to put continuous variation, that's one type. The other one is known as discontinuous variation. Sometimes referred to as discrete continuation, variation. All right, so there are two types of variation here. So what we're going to do now, we are going to compare. We are going to see the differences between the two. All right, so let's go to the first one. What is our understanding of continuous variation? What is our understanding of continuous variation? Continuous variation number one shows gradual changes. Gradual changes in whatever phenotypic characteristic that shows variation. That means we have many phenotypic characteristics in us. For example, our eye color, all right? We have blood group. Eye color is a phenotypic characteristics. Blood group is a phenotypic characteristics. Beside that, my height is a phenotypic characteristics. Our weight is a phenotypic characteristics. All right, look at my ear, all right? The type of ear, whether my ear lobe is attached or free. Uh, that is also a phenotypic characteristic. The ability for me to roll my tongue. Can I roll my tongue? Can I not roll my tongue? Uh, that is a phenotypic characteristic. So these phenotypic characteristics, the rolling of the tongue, having ear lobes, your blood group, your height, weight. So is that a gradual change? That means you look at a person, if you're looking at the height, does the height of a person show gradual change? Now, you might be misunderstanding here. We are not talking about you are born and you are an infant, you become a child, an adult. Is there a gradual change in your height? No. We are looking at all the adults of the same age group. And then comparing the adults of the same age group, do we have a tall adult? Do we have a short adult? Do we have an intermediate adult? The height, we are looking at that. Uh, is there a gradual change? Let's say there is an adult who is five feet, five inches. Now, do we have five feet, five and a half inches? Do we have five feet, six inches? Do we have five feet, six and a half? Five feet, seven, six feet, seven feet, do we have? So if we have the whole range from five feet to seven feet, do we have the whole range? Then there is a gradual change. Uh, that's the understanding. Now take a look at blood group. So you have blood group A. We have blood group B, we have blood group AB, we have blood group O. Do we have blood group between A and B, A and half B? Do we have B and half A? Do we have C? Do you have no such thing? Blood group is only four types. So for blood group, we have to conclude there is no gradual change. There are distinct changes. Fixed, discrete, distinct, distinguishable change. Uh, that's for blood group. So you cannot put blood group phenotypic characteristics and the height phenotypic characteristics, you cannot classify them the same. Why? Because height shows gradual change from one extreme low height or small height to another opposite extreme uh, tall or big height. But in the case of blood group, there is no gradual change. There is a fixed blood group of A, fixed blood group of B, fixed blood group of AB, fixed blood group of O. There's no gradual change. There is no intermediate blood group. Height, you have intermediate from the low to the uh, tallest, from the shortest person to the tallest person. There's a lots of intermediate uh, uh, heights. Uh, therefore, we have to classify them differently. So, a phenotypic characteristics such as height, which shows gradual changes. And that is called a continuous variation. So it shows gradual changes in phenotypic characteristics. In phenotypic characteristics, okay? It has, so characteristics, it shows. So here, all right, no gradual change. I just put in short, no gradual change. The change is, but distinct, distinct, distinct changes. 
All right, this thing changes. The second important point is, all right, second important point will be has intermediates. Has intermediates, yeah, no intermediates. All right, that means if you are looking at one extreme variant, okay? One extreme variant, huh? extreme variant, opposite extreme variant. Capture the point, huh? extreme variant. What do you mean by that? Short, tall. So tall is opposite of short. From year to year, the changes is gradual with intermediate with intermediate height. All right? Yeah, no. You have fixed variance, variant one, variant two, variant three, and then no intermediates. No, between them, you do not have any intermediates. Between them, there are no intermediates. No intermediates. Before them, after them, in between them, no intermediates. So that is the main difference between continuous and discontinuous variation. All right? So you must capture that. All right? Now, the second point. Second point to explore. Can we measure this? This can be measured. Height can be measured can be measured. If you can be measured, uh, we can quantify that. Therefore, this becomes quantitative change. Quantitative change. The change is quantitative because can be measured. All right? Now, what about this? Your blood group A, B, blood group A, B, blood group O, blood group A, blood group B, yellow, whether attached or not attached, thumb can be rolled or not. Can you measure? If you can measure, what are we measuring? What type of measurement can we do? Conclusion is it cannot be measured. So discontinuous variation has a property where it cannot be measured. Things which cannot be measured can only be observed. That is called qualitative, qualitative change or qualitative variation. Okay, I just put change, okay? All right. So that's the second point to note. All right, uh, second point to note. Uh, third point to explore, all right, will be on the genes. Now, we recognize that this continuous variation is caused by genetic factor. This discontinuous fa variation is also caused by genetic factor. That is the main, very main factor. Now, to a lesser extent, environment plays a role, but we are going to uh, uh, significantly, we are going to put it aside. That means we are going to put or we are going to ignore the environmental change and we are only going to focus on the genetic change, which is the main factor that contributes to both the variation. All right, so when you look at the genes, all right, why is this continuous? Why do you have height from one extreme end to the another extreme end, which is of a gradual change? Why do we have all kinds of variation? Whereas here is fixed variation. And this is because the Variation, these characteristics, phenotypic characteristics, these phenotypic characteristics, these phenotypic characteristics is a polygenetic inheritance. It's polygenetic inheritance. That means controlled by several genes, not one gene, several genes. It's controlled by several genes. That is why you have a full range of intermediates, several genes. Whereas this one is of the phenotypic ratio of point number three. So I just put phenotypic ratio is, is of monogenetic inheritance. Is monogenetic inheritance, meaning it is controlled by a single gene, controlled by a single gene, by a single gene. That's your third 
difference, major difference between the two, all right? One is polygenetic inheritance and the other one is controlled, uh, sorry, the other one is monogenetic, monogenetic in inheritance, okay? So I've explained that, okay? Now we come to the fourth one. The fourth one is we want to depict, display this variation on, uh, in the form of a graph. We want to show this variation in the form of a graph. So if we uh, show this variation graphically, so how will it look like? So graphic depiction, graphic depiction of a variation is shows normal distribution. It shows normal distribution. That means the variation, if I were to put in a graph, huh? I'm not labeling the x-axis and y-axis. I'm just focusing on the shape of the graph. It will show from one extreme. This is one extreme. This is one extreme. This is the other extreme. So that's a cutoff point. So you'll find that there will be a slow change. And then at certain point, there will be a mean. And then it will come down like that. So that means you have a, 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 a small proportion showing uh, one extreme uh, variant another proportion showing the opposite extreme variant. Most of the population has these phenotypic characteristics. Uh, this is what we call the favored characteristics. So the favored characteristics will form the mean. So the most probable characteristics, uh, that is your uh, normal distribution. Uh, normal distribution, so if I ask you what is the shape of the graph, uh, the shape is a bell-shaped graph. It's a bell-shaped graph but distribution is known as normal distribution. Now, what about the discontinuous variation? Uh, the graphical depiction of a discontinuous variation, if I were to do that, all right, this is distinct. The variation are distinct. Because the variation are distinct, they occupy distinct spaces on the x-axis. So mathematics dictates to us that this forms a histogram, but, a normal histogram in mathematics is continuous. That means the next bar must be uh, continuous with that, with no gaps. But here, yeah, no, there will be a gap like that. Something like that. This is a histogram with spaces between them, or it forms a bar chart. Uh, this is for discontinuous variation. So with discontinuous variation, if it's presented in a graph form, it forms a histogram, all right? It doesn't give you normal distribution, whereas this gives you the normal distribution, all right? Finally, all right, finally, although I said that this is polygenetic, this is monogenetic, now I'd like to bring in the environmental factor. So I will say that, so the question here is, uh, does environment factor to a certain extent, affect continuous variation? Answer yes. That means this is affected by environment. This environment factor does contribute to continuous variation. So, environmental factor, environmental factor does contribute. I just put that, does contribute to this variation. Now, what about this continuous variation? No. Environmental factor does not contribute. Environmental factor does not contribute. Okay, these are the major differences between continuous variation and discontinuous variation. All right, now I want you all to look, take a good look at it, and later take it down.